Hey everybody, welcome back to the Joe Rockstar channel. I haven't been out to Marana here in uh, quite a while. It's just such a long drive. This is my first time on the bike since the, uh, since the rib injury. Hopefully I don't uh, give myself any other injuries. I caught up with some of these 50B guys out here on the trail, De or 40B, these are the guys I'm going to be racing uh, next in January, starting in January, and they are smooth, let me tell you. Jeez. Maybe I'm not ready for B. Look at these guys, man. Having a cramp is not an excuse to be this far behind. I don't even see a glimpse of them. Damn it, I missed it. I was just talking about how you guys are way out of my league. But if you keep that up, <laughs> you all right? Finally, we are at the end of a very long season that began all the way back in September of 2018. This super season was part of a strategy to align the AMRA race season with the AMA. The benefit being that now, AMRA seasons are lined up with the calendar year, which opens up sponsorship opportunities as January is when most sponsors spend their yearly sponsorship budget. For me, none of that really mattered. I just wanted more races. And over the last 15 months, we got more races. And this season brought some great finishes and some deep disappointments. On the positive side, I finally finished a race with a win for my first podium and made great strides in my riding skill. Unfortunately, circumstances, both personal and mechanical, would seriously affect my chances in the season's points battle. Starting with a major blow in round one, where my brand new Husky ended up out of commission in the first test with a broken frame. Although I was able to complete the test, I would not be able to finish the rest of the race. I need to go back because I broke my bike. Okay. Oh, I didn't finish. That's okay. <laughs> it's an enduro. You finish it, no matter how far you go, you're always a finisher as oh. long as you make it to the out of the first special. Oh, so we don't, so I don't get a DNF? You, well, you get the, you'll get the score after that point, that's it. That's it, right. And even though I should have received points, somehow the race officials did not score me as a finisher, and so I started the season off in the worst way, with a did not finish. On the bright side, Husqvarna and the amazing people at Cycle Skis and ATVs went out of their way to return that Husky to me repaired at no cost. If you are in the market for a bike, please give CSA a chance to earn your business. They are really good people. Meanwhile, it just so happens that I still had my KTM 2 stroke 300 from my two stroke versus four stroke series. So I was able to compete in rounds two and three. And both races were fun. I rode well, but inconsistency would lead to some less than stellar finishes. I managed an amazing start in round two at Globe, only to succumb to fatigue and a lack of aggression, dropping from third overall to a 10th place finish. And the opposite happened to me in round three at Oracle, where I managed to salvage a horrible last place start to work my way all the way up to seventh. Round four took us to a co-sanctioned event in Lake Havasu, where we would essentially be competing in a motocross race, something that I was not used to at all. Despite the return of the Husky and a pretty good start, and some of my best riding for most of the race, fatigue and a tough crash on the beach in the last lap would drop me from the top five to finish eighth. The new year brought my first ever win at the Buckeye Hair Scramble after posting my worst finish of the season there just a year prior. With the exception of a short sand wash section, this race is another motocross race disguised as a hair scramble. It takes place at the fantastic Arizona Cycle Park motocross track. And this was a shock to me since I've always struggled with motocross tracks. It was a pleasant surprise for sure. If only I could follow it up at the next event. 
Why is it you think that Husky and KTM is so popular in this world? Look at the podiums and then you got guys like Joe Rockstar on YouTube. It's <laughs> an international sensation. Solid's Day in the Desert is the name they attached to my favorite race venue this year. In previous years, it's been labeled the Cancer Crusher Enduro ISDE Qualifier, and prior to that, the Jim Utzi Enduro. But the venue is known as Mile Markers, and each time that I've had the privilege of racing there, it's been an incredible course. It encompasses a mix of everything that makes the Arizona desert a great place to ride. I would have a tough go of it this year, finishing sixth, but I loved the event regardless. Since the introduction of this race in 2018, the Rough Rider 100 in Prescott has probably been the most hyped and promoted Amur race. Turns out, there's some really good reasons for it. Sporting the largest pro prize purse, it attracts some of the best riders in the West. And even though some shady scheduling issues with another race organization siphoned off a few big names in the industry, this year's race did not disappoint. The miserable conditions and tough course made this race one of the most memorable events I will ever have participated in, especially after Heartbreak Hill, where many novice racers had their hopes of winning this race shattered. And for me, this log will always have a special place in my heart. Despite my troubles here, I managed to take a fifth place in the wrong class. I'm not sure how, but for the second time this season, I'd get screwed by scoring errors, which I decided to make a point of emphasis in my next video from Sam Manuel, where I worked the race. Now this is the one that my club hosts, and so I help prepare and mark some of the course as well as promote the event. I really want to race this course someday, Maybe I'll work a different race next season so that I can race Sam Manuel. And once again, scoring would be a problem. And this problem would come to a head. Finally, Amra would take some major steps in correcting the issue, and it seemed to work well for the next events. Unfortunately, a personal tragedy would prevent me from attending the next round. A second race among the Pines of North Prescott, I would have to miss the Campwood race. That's another favorite one of mine. My mother, who had been suffering from dementia and Alzheimer's for several years, fell fatally ill, so I rushed home to see her one last time. A week later, she passed quietly in her sleep. A short time later, another new race that I was looking forward to in Page, Arizona seemed to be a huge success. From the videos I've seen, I can only hope to get a chance to race it myself. But this year, that event conflicted with my stepdaughter's graduation from the University of Arizona. I would have to be a real schmuck to miss out on that for a novice dirt bike race and we are so proud of her. Summer brought the heat, and so we'd have about eight weeks off until the next race at Flagstaff. With a new suspension and a head full of steam, I went into this hungry for a win. Maybe I let the competition get to me, but there was definitely a deep desire to beat my buddies and take this one more than any other race. Whatever the reason, I came out swinging, angrily intimidating and yelling at anyone on the course that slowed me down. If I lost, I wanted it to be because I was unable to ride any faster, not because someone else was blocking the safest line through the trail. Now I know a better rider would have taken alternate lines and made passes, but I'm not there yet. I resented that I should have to risk crashing into a tree stump or a rock face because slower riders would not move over. I was overly aggressive, rude, selfish, and my behavior was a serious disappointment. But it worked. I finished second and only behind a new racer that clearly entered the wrong class. I would beat all the usual guys in my class. Unfortunately, being such a disappointment to myself and others is not worth the plastic trophy I got for being a real asshole. In the next race, I tried to make up for it by keeping my cool, to keep it light and fun. It didn't make me ride much better, but I think it helped keep my spirits up when my bike had some mechanical issues and ultimately I crashed, injuring my ribs to the point where I was unable to complete another lap. I limped to the finish line to wait for a checkered flag and crossed in a pitiful 15th place. And that brings us to the final race of the season. With too many missed races, a few inaccurate scores, and most of all poor results in several races, I'm in no position to place well in the final season standings. At Lake Havasu this year, still sore from the Oracle race and with no chance to improve my standing on the 2018-19 super season, 
Well, I'm just out to finish what I started and prepare for the next phase of this adventure, where I will move up to the intermediate class. I hope you guys will stay with me and come back to the channel to see how this next chapter unfolds. Will I get better, or will the much faster riders and longer races beat me down? Will I rise to the challenge or pack it in and retire? There's only one way to find out. As always, I will put up the video from the final round at Lake Havasu as soon as I can, and I thank you all for checking out my videos. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you like these videos, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.